On this sunny afternoon, the smell of roasted chestnuts is in the air. It's autumn in Barcelona and you're listening to the 44th episode of the Barcelona Virtual Podcast on European Marketing and Innovation. And I'm your host, Paul Fleming, still in a light polo shirt, despite the fact that it's already fall. Ale, you know, uh, it seems like the muggy summer temperatures just refuse to go away. I'm ready for my winter sweaters. Well, Paul, I think you're going to need to wait a bit more. In Catalan, we even have a word for this, chafugo. That's the autumn humidity that keeps hanging on. We are a Mediterranean city, after all. Well, the very idea of a warm or even hot fall seems to me an apt metaphor for what we're seeing in the business world. Everything seems to be heating up rather than cooling down as we advance toward the winter months. That's true. We spoke in detail about these challenges in the September episode and gave practical ideas about how to face them. That's right. As a matter of fact, we're continuing that idea in this edition offering innovative ways we can all face inflation, supply chain disruptions, economic turndowns, along with a very depressed Christmas outlook. Speaking of Christmas, did you know that Charles Dickens revealed a powerful business lesson in his classic holiday fable, A Christmas Carol? In it, he tells how Scrooge, an extremely selfish businessman, is visited on Christmas Eve by three frightening spirits, the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future. What did Scrooge learn? In a nutshell, he discovered that the secret weapon of any and all businesses, in the best of times and in the worst of times, can always be found sitting right in front of every owner, CEO, and manager. So, what's the secret weapon? Don't move. Stay right where you are. You'll find out in just a minute. The following content is brought to you by the BV Innovation Lab. Voice services, AI, virtual reality, and neuromarketing are only a few of the ways we help you innovate in a safe space. To learn more, go to lab.bevirtual.com. That's lab.bevirtual.com. At the BV Innovation Lab, we bring you the future today. I'm intrigued that you've mentioned Dickens, Paul. A Christmas Carol was my forever favorite as a young girl. And since Alejandro will surely ask you again, I'll do it first. What is the secret weapon in Dickens' tale you've found? For entrepreneurs, brands, companies, and people in general. Ha ha ha, you're too fast for me, George. Charles Dickens wrote about transformation, about seeing things suddenly in a new way, and for the first time. Ebenezer Scrooge was exclusively focused on money, extremely tight-fisted and greedy. The people around him were only objects, a means to an end, and he disdained them. Spot on. If you are drawing up a business analogy, I can see where you are heading. So many big brands and corporations are like that, faceless and soulless, despite their humanistic declarations and massive campaigns. So, what was it that, as you say, gave Scrooge a soul. He woke up, literally. After a night of strange visions, he got out of bed and found that he had been blind. Yet now, he could see. What did he suddenly see? The secret weapon? Precisely that, Ale. He suddenly saw, and I mean truly saw, all the people around him, right in front of him. He saw their immense value, and he understood that the secret of his own success from that moment on would be found in these individuals. Paul, you know that I'm rather a geek. I try not to get too excited. However, that story almost gives me goosebumps. Still, how can it help our listeners face coming challenges? The first step is for us to be fully cognizant of the human beings in our teams, as well as their talents, hidden and otherwise, that we need to cultivate. You know, in this program, we so often talk about technological innovation. Yet, to enable us to face very big challenges just ahead, it's time for us to really now focus on human innovation. Fortunately, 
We're about to speak to two leading Spanish experts who do just that. Now, let's get on to the good part, which is to present to you two very good friends of the agency, Eva Aldea and Mark Fuentes. You are about to have the distinct pleasure of almost having a personal consulting session with two brilliant minds, people who are very visionary and yet have their feet, you know, firmly planted on the ground. Uh, they're not floating on any clouds. They know what the challenges are here in not only in marketing, but in life in this 21st century. So let's just move right into what will be definitely a fascinating interview. To begin with, how do you both define human innovation? Eva, let's start with you. For me, human innovation is a mindset. It's a new way of treating people at the workplace. Treating people as fully humans is having a holistic approach, developing their full potential, and it urges. Believe me, companies and teams are so dehumanized. They are more worried about members about numbers than people. Numbers are important, but not instead of people. And when leaders treat their people as fully humans, they are unstoppable. If we will operate knowing the power and potential of one human being, poof. And it's because of that that we want to help leaders and teams to discover, reconnect, and reactivate their power as human beings, developing their full potential and take them to their next level. Because doing that, you can transform everything around. You create, you innovate, you evolve, you enjoy living in the present. There is growth, there is evolution, there is more joy, connection, there is life. And Mark, in addition to your role as senior specialist at the BV Innovation Lab, you and Ava have founded the company Fully Human, a name that I just love, by the way. What does human innovation have to do with being fully human? Well, for us, uh, human innovation and being fully human makes sense because uh, for us, the real innovation, as Eva was saying, is to rediscover what does it mean to be fully human. For us, being fully human means first living with a purpose. And when we say purpose, we don't just mean objectives, goals, achievements, but, but living with, with a mission. And we believe, we really believe this also translates in, in work life. Also, being fully human is about belonging to a tribe. And belonging is the key word here. I think we all as humans have a need of, of belonging, a deep need of belonging. And this can happen in all spheres of our lives. And it's all about developing authentic relationships, relationships that, are, that go further than just talking about the superficial things. It means being vulnerable. It means uh, paying real attention to others. And also the third uh, way of what we understand of being fully human is what we call developing your sacred spaces. Uh, what we mean with this is that also humans, we have this desire of transcending, of, of going further with our lives, of having lives full of meaning. And we have to be intentional of building these sacred spaces also in the, in the uh, work environment. And last but not least, uh, we believe that uh, being fully human means thriving. I think we are designed to thrive in all areas of our life, at work, with our skills, with our abilities, with our relationship, with our creativity, with our curiosity. Uh, life and being human is about thriving. You know, we talk a lot about AI, artificial intelligence in this podcast. So what do you celebrate about human intelligence and how can it be stimulated? I don't know, by more curiosity, exposure to many other ideas or the right working environment, for example? Ooh, I love this question. There is so much human intelligence. I celebrate the uniqueness, the beauty, the singularity, the potential of each human being and the power with which we have been created and it has been given to us. There is so much perfection and intelligence. And if there is something that, that is so powerful in our bodies, is our mind. And when you know how the mind works and its power, 
your life, leadership, relationships, everything changes. So for me, the key is to know the rules of the mind, how our minds work. And take because taking control of your thoughts and beliefs, your reality changes. Because everything starts with a thought, the thoughts create your feelings, the feelings your actions, and the actions your events. So if you want to change your reality, you have to start changing your thoughts. Mark, over to you. I believe that the beauty of human intelligence is that it is multidimensional. So intelligence is not just tied to one sphere of knowledge, but it has this potential to, to grow and expand in different dimensions and different spheres of, of knowledge, of beauty, of space, of music. And, and this is the beauty of human intelligence. I believe that the key, as you were saying, Paul, is this powerful tool we have in our hands that is curiosity. Curiosity is a mindset. It's a mindset in it's the way we approach life. Curiosity about other people's thoughts, curiosity about how things work, curiosity about uh, nature, curiosity about even ourselves. No? This is a powerful tool that we have in our minds. And, and the key is, is becoming like children again. No? It's children this curiosity mindset, they are, all, they are always asking why, 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 uh, how these things work, and they have this curiosity, this spark in their eyes, and I think this is, this is the key to, re, to rediscover, re, re, uh, charge this, this curiosity mindset in our lives. Finally, and boy, I hate the sound of that because I'd like to spend another hour with both of you here in the studio. Uh, you send out a wonderful newsletter every Wednesday called the Midweek Boost. What's interesting about it is that you share very practical tips for both leaders and teams. As we conclude, could you share one of your favorite tips for leaders, which many of our listeners are, and then a useful tip to inspire human innovation among teams? Well, I have many favorite tips, but maybe uh, one um, that I think that is so powerful and needed is to lead from love and not from fear. Paul, there is so much fear at the workplace. Fear to fail, fear of what others are going to think about me and my leadership, fear of not meeting others' expectations, fear of not taking good decisions, fear of not being enough. But when you act from fear, you start to lose confidence in yourself. You become smaller, limited. You start to compare uh, yourself with others or you even look down on others and for me the key is to love yourself first then you will be able to love others and when I talk about uh, this kind of love I don't mean romantic love eh? there are so many expressions at the workplace what it means to love your people that is to please listen to them is being present, spend time with them, serve them, you know. And remember to fill your glass so you will be able to give to drink others. Sometimes we want to help others, we want to give, give, give to others, but we don't realize that our glass is empty. empty. Because when your glass is empty, you feel thirsty and then you start demanding then it's not your real you who leads, it's your ego instead. So boost your self-confidence. I'd like to cut in just briefly, if I may. First, to tell Eva and Mark how much I am enjoying this interview. These are truly fresh ideas. And secondly, to remind our listeners about our blog. We've put up the link to the Midweek Boost newsletter, as well as many other resources. They're in the program notes for this edition, which is Season 4, Episode 9. Thanks, George. So, how can we boost our teams, Mark? If I could give just one tip to a team, it would be to cultivate humility. 
I believe that there is a counterintuitive idea behind the concept of a team that integrates humility as a core value. And is that the more humble the team is, the more audacious it becomes. Because uh, team members have enough confidence in themselves to try new things, to make mistakes. They are not worrying about what others will be thinking about them. They are not slaves of the image or a certain image that they project. On the other hand, or in the contrary, uh, pride makes a team small because it's only worried of protecting its image and doesn't dare to grow and make the mistakes involved in uh, becoming a team more innovative and creative. So yes, if I could give this just one tip, it will be cultivate humility as a core value in your team. Ava, Mark, it's been a real pleasure talking with you. Uh, as a matter of fact, I already feel more innovative and most especially more fully human. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And well, we, we love to collaborate with leaders like you that are so committed to embrace the human dimension of people and their teams. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Paul, for giving us this opportunity to share our heart and our commitment. If you enjoyed this interview, please remember to check out our other flash briefings in the podcast section of our blog. Many of the episodes include very interesting chats with European innovators and entrepreneurs. Till then, goodbye from Spain. This flash briefing is brought to you by Barcelona Virtual, a European internet pioneer. To visit us, type the letter B together with virtual.com. That's bvirtual.com. Thank you.